If we want innovation to come to market, do we need production? What happened was, on one hand, those companies, Hewlett Packard, IBM, Texas Instruments, uh, came under great pressure from the markets to get rid of these very expensive fabrication factories. And on the other side, there are these technological advances that allowed the engineer to send a complete digital file of instructions for cutting out those integrated circuits to send it over the internet and send it to a cutting machine that could be located anywhere in the world. And in fact, the place in the world where those chips are now likely to be made is Taiwan. Uh, and so uh, the two men do not need to be in the same factory, in the same place, in the same company. So there was a combination of financial pressure and of technological advance that completely fragmented industry. And I think that in the United States, uh, this took place to a far greater extent than in Germany. Why? Probably because financial markets had more uh, impact on the companies than they did in Germany. And I think these internet technologies were pioneered in the United States. So the reality was that companies had a lot of incentive to move their production, not only out of the United States, but out of the four walls of the corporation. It's not just that HP moved uh, the chip making out of the United States, it handed it over completely to a new set of companies in Taiwan. And so it's both offshoring and outsourcing that took place. And uh, that was really the dominant trend in, in the United States with new companies, companies like Apple, Cisco, uh, Broadcom, Qualcomm. These are companies that specialize in design in, uh, in R&D and distribution, those were the big new companies in the United States for the last 20, 30 years. And I think people thought that model, the Apple model, uh, where Apple has all production taking place, you know, basically in China with uh, another company, Foxconn, but Apple still gets the huge share of the profits from these products. So this looked like it might be the model of the future. And I think now we're beginning to understand that this might be a model for some companies, particularly in the IT sector. But as we look across other emerging technologies like biotech, new materials, medical devices, renewable energy, we're seeing that, in fact, it is not possible to do the same kind of separation of research and development from production. And that if we want to get value from our own innovation, we need also to have production capabilities in our own country. The real potential of keeping a strong manufacturing sector that's extremely attractive to bright young people. I mean, when I visited Mittelstand companies near Stuttgart and saw, you know, bright young 25-year-olds out of technical universities who were excited about their work, uh, the idea that manufacturing is just a dull, dirty, dangerous activity, which many people in the United States think, you know, young people just won't want to go into this activity. But when you go to Germany and see uh, what, what these activities can be and how attractive they can be uh, and how vital these activities are, I think it's, it's an example to us of what we can do in the United States why this can be a challenging, good job, 
and why these companies can be very successful 